what Saquon Barkley can we expect to see on the, this Thursday night showdown? We'll talk about that today on the Thursday night preview. I'm your host, Adam Wildy, and this is brought to you by footballguys.com. Save time, worry less, win more. So we've got a lowly 41 point over under this week. I wish I could be as excited as I was last week. I will try to bring the energy, but it is between the Giants and the Washington football team. Uh, Washington football team will be at home, uh, three point favorites at home. So a couple of injuries to get out of the way first. Saquon Barkley is questionable, but he is expected to play. Let's talk about that first for a second, because Saquon Barkley played 48% of the snaps last week. He's already been talking about being a little bit nervous going into this week on a four-week, uh, four-day uh, stint between his first game after injuring himself just pretty much this time last year. So there's a little nervousness there. I don't expect the snap share to go up, actually. I think that week three is where we can expect the snap share to go up. So I'd be pretty nervous to start Saquon Barkley in this one. I'd be more excited in week three um, if you could – start somebody that's got any viability at all just for one more week. I know everyone's excited to start Saquon, but it would not make sense to ramp up his uh, snap share going into, uh, you know, a Washington football team defense after only four days of rest after getting his first real NFL contact in over a year after a pretty rough ACL too. So that's one injury, but the good news is that none of the Giants receivers are on the injury report Evan Ingram is already declared out. That's it for the Giants side of the ball. Home Washington, you're pretty much got a clean bill of health. Of course, Ryan Fitzpatrick is down for the foreseeable future. Uh, Antonio Gibson logged a full uh, participation. So he is on the report, but he should be good to go. So let's look position by position and start figuring out um, – what basically what we're going to be looking at in this Thursday night game is terms of fantasy football value, really not going to be too terribly much to be quite honest with you. You've got Daniel Jones down here at 24. You've got tail Heineke down here at 25. The only thing I, I, I wouldn't stream either of them, but we do have to talk about it for two, uh, two QB super flex leagues. Taylor Heineke is prone to run. Taylor Heineke, I would say has the better weapons with Antonio Gibson, JD McKissick, and the wide receivers in Terry McLaurin and Diami Brown. Um, so I, I wouldn't mind if you have, you know, some injury at quarterback and you need to, as a matter of fact, if Ryan Fitzpatrick was your quarterback too, would not mind starting to Heineke if necessary. Step over here to the running back. We already looked at Saquon Barkley. We'll find him down here at uh, running back 20. 14 points might actually be a little bit generous against the Washington defense at a 48%. Snap chair. As I said, personally, I do not believe that snap chair goes up. It should stay around 50%. That doesn't mean Devontae Booker is in any sort of consideration. Tough defense. Um, not going there, even if he's going to get 50% of the snaps. So you go up here to all the way to running back eight, as Antonio Gibson predicted at 17.5 um, PPR points. Uh, I think he's an excellent play this week. Three point favorites at home. Great Washington defense. Head over here to the wide receivers. You have uh, Kenny Galladay this week. Uh, one, one week removed from injury is always good. So he had the hamstring all offseason, and he actually logged a decent bit of snaps in week one. He did look amazing, but he's coming back from injury. So another four days from a player that's trending up um, should be a good thing. You also have Terry McLaurin here at uh, wide receiver 18. Another player to get excited about. The only problem is, well, it's Taylor Heineke throwing the ball, him the ball. So, you know, you're not so sure about what you're going to get from Terry McLaurin, but he's not someone that's ever going to be on your bench. Um, he is a, a big game waiting to happen. We have him projected to, for 14.8 points. You've got Deami Brown stepping into the wide receiver two role, not going there with Taylor Heineke, not going down to um, Adam Humphreys either. And unless in the deep league, I'm not really interested in Sterling Shepard or Darius Slayton, though Sterling Shepard did log a ton of snaps and looks locked and loaded to be a prime piece of that offense. Last thing we're going to look at is Logan Thomas. I'm not going down to Kyle Rudolph. Um, there, there's no way you have to go down to Kyle Rudolph, to be quite honest with you, but he is going to be the starting tight end. 
for the Giants. But what, who we're really excited about is Logan Thomas, who had a little bit of a rapport with Taylor Heineke last year. You know that Taylor Heineke had that big Tampa Bay game. So one tight end that you could look at this week is Logan Thomas down here at tight end nine. And that is 10.5 points. That is all your fantasy relevant players this week. And if you want to get more projections from us, go over and subscribe to footballguys.com. I hope you have a great Thursday night. And